Hey guys, my name is Caitlin, and today I'm going to tell you Donovan's birth story. So I want to preface this video with the fact that it is a birth video. That seems really obvious, but um, a lot of people include just still photos or um, just a tiny bit of footage. We have the actual footage of Donovan really being born. Nothing below the belly button, but you are going to see me pushing and me in kind of a lot of discomfort. So if that's something that freaks you out, I'm not offended if you don't feel like watching this, but I wanted to give you the heads up. The video is a little bit dark because I had the lights off when I was in labor and also I didn't use a very high quality camera. My little sister was kind enough and patient enough to document this for me so I'm just grateful that we have anything and I did my best to edit it so that you could see um, something. <laughs> so here we go. I was 38 weeks pregnant when I went into labor with Donovan. He's awake, so one second. Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> okay. Okay, check it out. And I was completely unaware that I was going into labor. He's nursing, so you're gonna hear that. We went to dinner with some friends and throughout the entire dinner, and this is two days before he was born, I had to kind of get up and walk around and kind of hold the chair, stick my butt out and kind of just like sway. I was in a lot of discomfort and I thought, I think the baby's coming soon, but I don't want to make anybody panic or um, feel like they need to stick around, but I definitely thought it was happening very soon. And yeah, so we went home and our the same friends kind of st stayed and um, helped me out and they were very, very sweet with me and they gave me like warm things to put on my back and I kept telling them, reassuring them like, trust me, everything's fine. I don't think I'm in labor. I think it would be a little bit more intense. Um, it's cool. And I was one of those people that originally wanted to have a birth at home and a lot of people gave me a hard time about that so then I wanted to go with a birthing center and my insurance, we weren't sure if it covered that. <laughs> I ended up going with a midwife program at a hospital which turned out to be an amazing, amazing choice. But the reason I'm telling you that is to illustrate how laid back I was about giving birth. Um, I had zero fear. I did not want to use medicine and I wanted to have a completely natural birth period. That same evening, I ended up being really uncomfortable. In fact, like my whole right leg was numb and I had a lot of lower back pain that I can remember. I just really needed my mom in that moment. I knew it was really late, but I called her anyway. I asked her, it seemed like I'm having contractions. I described how I was feeling and she said, you know, that sounds like it, but maybe it's Braxton Hicks. Um, so maybe it's false alarm. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just in a lot of discomfort and I'm feeling really weird. And she said, don't worry about it. You would, I think you'd be a little more out of breath. I think you'd be feeling a lot worse. I think you're fine. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I trusted her. And because I did feel fine, really. But I, in the back of my mind, I knew something was progressing. After I talked to my mom, I tried to rest for a little while and it didn't work well. I woke up around three something and I was in a lot of discomfort to the point where I was actually crying. I could not, for the life of me, get the pain to get out of my leg and out of my lower back. And Ben was cuddling me here on the couch and I told him like, I really, I don't know what's going on, you know, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't think I'm in labor, but my belly was super hard, like a rock. And like I said, I had all of that pain in the right side of my body. And I decided with Ben's suggestion that I should call my midwife. She asked me if I had felt the baby move in a while. And I thought, no, I haven't. 
haven't. It's been a couple of hours, so I was really freaked out. She said, come on in for a quick ultrasound just to check on the baby, and we're going to check you and see if maybe you are potentially going into labor early. We kind of rushed to the hospital because, I don't know, something about her asking me if I had felt him move and my response being no <laughs> made me very, very panicky. So, luckily, it was four in the morning and we got to UCLA in like 10 minutes, which normal LA traffic gets us there in about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> it's so bad. But um, we got there very, very quickly and then, of course, as soon as we got in the parking lot, he started kicking, so I felt immediately better. Like, thank God, he's okay. And I still wanted to be checked, so we went inside, and I was a centimeter dilated and having contractions. So I was in early labor, I had no idea. And I asked her if I could go home still and just relax. She said, totally fine. The benefit, I think, of going with a midwife is that they have a very relaxed approach and they totally encourage you to just trust your body and your um, natural instincts. So I felt fine and very comfortable with leaving the hospital, so we did just that. We left and I spent the entire day at home in early labor. I went shopping, I we did barbecue with family. I wasn't super energetic or anything, but I was functioning just fine, with the exception of I would take a couple of minutes to like catch my breath, uh, you know, here and there while we were out and about because I was still having contractions. <laughs> the whole day went by. Meanwhile, my mom is panicking because she thinks she's gonna miss the delivery of her first grandson. Leaving a place they were actually like on a little weekend trip that we do with friends and family forever. Um, so she had to repack her suitcase. And my sister was coming too. They had to switch their flights and um, they miraculously got in around 10, 10.30ish. Ben picked them up from LAX and I just chilled out here. When they got here, um, I told everybody to just go home and rest because I didn't feel like my labor was really progressing. I felt pretty laid back. So um, I didn't think I was going to be going to the hospital. We walked and walked and walked for like two hours outside on this huge hill that we have here um, because I really wanted my labor to progress and my poor mom and sister are three hours ahead of uh, LA time so I felt really bad for them. They were super tired <laughs> but they were still walking with me and timing my contractions and everything so that was really sweet and then eventually I was like okay I'm tired let's go ahead and go to sleep. Around 4.30 in the morning I woke up suddenly thinking that I peed my pants <laughs> and I then had the realization that actually my water had broken and I went to the bathroom, kind of confirmed that for myself, and I was so excited, oh my gosh. So I told my mom, who was sleeping here on the couch <laughs> with my sister, and she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, wow, this is happening. And she woke up Ben because I went back to the bathroom to like clean myself up and start getting ready to go. Ben apparently jolted awake and was super excited and shocked that we were about to do it. Test positive for beta strep, unfortunately, and that just meant that I needed penicillin as soon as possible after my water had broken. Um, so we, there was nothing frantic about um, my household once my water had broken. It wasn't like the movies where you like have to rush and everybody's screaming or something. Um, you know, I had been having contractions the whole day before, and um, I was handling everything quite well. It wasn't a big deal. So I wanted to be as laid back as possible, going to the hospital also, even after my water had broken. You can see that everybody was really calm, and there was just like um, a genuine excitement going on. I love you, Daddy. Love you, I was a little bit, um, I was still, you know, feeling pretty out of it and my contractions were getting stronger at this point. We stopped for coffee and I got a blueberry muffin. Blueberry muffin please. Don't have to a warm blueberry it up. muffin, did you want that warmed up? No thanks. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> he always okay, likes okay. it. And once again, we dodged all of the horrible LA traffic because it was now like 5 o'clock in the morning.
once I had arrived to the hospital, it was a pretty busy room. You know, it wasn't just me and my midwife. It was me, my midwife, the nurse, um, technically Donovan in my belly. <laughs> my mom, Ben's mom, and my sister, and Ben. I was doing hypnobirthing preparation from the time of like 34 weeks pregnant until 38 weeks when I was delivering. So I was hoping for this like really ambient, calm uh, space to, you know, be laboring in and instead it was a little bit busier than I had hoped and people were talking a lot naturally <laughs> um, and I was very, very distracted which I kind of hated. I was going a little bit crazy but still staying really calm. And I have to say, for those of you that are pregnant and watching this or intending on having children, I really highly recommend these hypnobirthing tracks that I use because I really think it's the reason I was able to tolerate the pain and to stay brave and just go through it as calmly as I did. The room was a little bit more busy than I had hoped and in fact, I think it really distracted my focus and my labor started to kind of slow down. I was not progressing quickly at all. And I hated that they strapped things to my belly. I wanted to be able to be free and roaming around wherever and whenever I wanted, but they really wanted to strap the monitors on me, which they were very, very sweet and accommodating. Once again, I recommend going with a midwife program. <laughs> they listen to you. They don't tell you how you should be feeling or what you should be doing. They allowed me to take off the monitors as soon as they were done monitoring the baby. I was hoping that it would be a very quick process, especially because a lot of people that do practice hypnobirthing have a very, very easy, quick um, delivery experience. What I've heard, so I was like, maybe that'll be me. And it wasn't, but that's fine. They kept checking me and I was getting I, honestly, like I felt there was a time where it was everything was kind of getting stronger and more frequent. Then all of a sudden, I think because of all the commotion, I, I felt in me that it was slowing down. So I was like, shoot, I really need it to be quiet in here. And I want the lights off. I just wanted to get into a really, really um, tranquil state of mind like I did when I would fall asleep to those tapes or tracks, whatever you want to call them. We're going. <laughs> a lot around my, like, that part of the hospital. I was like walking, walking, walking with my mom um, and Ben. My sister was amazing. I taught her the counting that I did during my hypnobirthing tracks and she was doing it with me to help me stay focused and oh my gosh, it helped me so much. I remember feeling so at ease and I only wanted her to do it with me because she was the only person that would do the exact wording and the exact timing that I learned on my tracks and that I was used to so I was like, okay. I've got my sister here, and she's got my back. So she did this counting with me for so long. And you know what's so funny? I don't even remember how it goes. <laughs> I don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's amazing. The next thing I remember is, you know, they would check me, and I was only like a little bit more dilated. Woo! And, um... And I was very frustrated about that because at this point I don't remember it being like painful, uh, just really uncomfortable <clears throat> and I was ready for it to move along, like I just wanted it to progress and it wasn't. It gave me some, like, I don't know what it was, I should probably look it up and I'll write it in the, the description box below, but they were like, hey, you know, we're not going to give you Pitocin or anything like that because I I strictly said, no, I don't want any of that. They said, okay, we're gonna give you this stuff. And I feel like it's called miso or something because all I remember is thinking about miso soup. This could be totally wrong. You can laugh if, if you want. <laughs> but they gave me this thing and I took it and it worked. <laughs> so after that, my labor started to progress pretty steadily, but not quickly. Um, time was moving and so was I. I was 
getting into every position possible to be comfortable, and that is not on the bed. I do remember that I spent a lot of time on the floor, on <laughs> my hands and knees, or like in a child's pose type position. I felt very, very comfortable on the toilet, and I wasn't using the bathroom or anything, I just liked sitting in that position. At this point, things started to really start to to move and groove, and I actually threw up a lot. I don't know how many times I threw up in total, but it's definitely more than five. <laughs> so, there you go. It's a happy detail for you guys. And I remember that at one point Ben helped me get into the shower because I thought, okay, I originally wanted a water birth, maybe this will help ease some of the pain. I will go in there and just like let the water run on my back. I was pretty out of it, and I think this is also the time when I could no longer really open my eyes. I was not responsive, really. I remember him saying things to me, but I don't remember seeing his face. So he stood next to the shower with me and he rubbed my back and I, I was, you know, not feeling it. It was not helping me at all, actually. In fact, I remember thinking again, I think this is slowing down my labor. I think I need to get out of here. So. I got out of the shower, I was checked again, and when I remember it being like very, very intense, um, I was around like seven, more, a little bit more than seven centimeters dilated. This is like the point where I thought I was almost done. Everybody kept saying, you're so close, it's coming, you're very close. And then they tell you, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna check you. And it was only seven, I was like, no, I felt really defeated. Uh, okay. Tell us a little more. Uh, yeah, I had like bottom shift when I was holding uh, your stuff. You're, you're open to good seven. Job. Good. Seven no. Oh, honey, no, oh, honey, 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 you're doing you so can do good. That. You can oh. Okay, yeah, you keep yelling. Get that pain out. Okay, I know, baby. I know. I know. Oh, honey, I know. Don't give up now. Once again, you guys have to also consider that, you know. I, I didn't take um, any type of pain relief medicine, <laughs> so it was, it was, I felt absolutely everything. I will say that the hypnobirthing must have done something good because, I don't know, I, I, I was still really calm and quiet through all of the pain and discomfort. After seven centimeters, things once again were steadily moving along but this is like we're we're talking o over probably 18 hours at this point and wow <laughs> you know I, I give props to my my family for being in the room with me you know um, Poor Ben had to entertain a lot of people that were anxiously waiting and he was getting a lot of phone calls. He spent a lot of time also just propping me up so I could sway and holding me and talking to me. And um, his mom then kind of took her shift and she massaged my back for so stinking long. I honestly, I, I'm so grateful for her also in that day. It was incredible the love that I felt from her. I was literally on the floor on my knees um, just trying to relieve the feeling, like just the pain and the discomfort. I was just getting into every position possible. I would even get on my hands and knees on the bed. I probably looked insane, but you know, she was there massaging me, telling me it's okay, you're all right, and you're doing such a great job. I remember she told me you're so brave and I, that meant so much to me. It really helped me get through um, that particular time. I felt empowered. I felt really strong, even though I technically did not feel any of those things. I was feeling pretty, whew, uh, a lot of things. None of them were good feelings, um, except for the excitement to meet him. That's really what drove all of this. Eventually, we got to the nine centimeters point. There was a time <laughs> which I probably shouldn't leave out, where like, I don't know, I had a really intense contraction or something and they had to put an oxygen mask on me. All I remember about that was that I was like, not about it. I did not want that thing on me. Also, you know, because they were like, Donovan didn't like that contraction. They freaked out my mom and was acting I didn't want 
So I was like, okay. And I didn't even have the energy at this point because it was very far along in the 22 hour process. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll try to keep the oxygen on, but I couldn't even communicate. And I, once again, remember, I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I was talking to everybody like this, like, okay. Alright, but then it was fine, and then they allowed me to take those stupid monitors off my belly so I could kind of move a little bit easier. And this is when my own mom became like extremely involved. She hated the fact that I had a natural birth without medicine. She was like, why did you do this? Because clearly I'm her baby and she hated seeing me in pain. And just like I would hate to see him in pain. Ow. It was not easy. I never wanted to be the person that had like a horror story and freaked a bunch of women out about my birth experience because when I was pregnant I I freaking hated those people. I was like, why on earth do you want to freak me out and scare me before I do this amazing thing that my body is meant to do? So I never wanted to do that either, so I'm not going to do it here, but I will tell you honestly that I was in excruciating pain and it was very intense for me. There are some people that have a natural birth without an epidural, without a spinal, and they are like, it was fine, I was, it was totally easy and it was amazing. Um, no, I'm not going to be unrealistic <laughs> with you guys. I, it was really, really intense and I had to be very focused. So yes, I was really quiet, yes, I was very, very calm. Um, no, I didn't ever yell at anybody or like curse at anyone. I was in a lot of pain and discomfort, but I got through it and it was a really, really special experience and it was amazing. I finally, finally got to 10 centimeters and it was time for me to push. Good job. Wow. Wow. You're doing great. Oh, good, honey. Good, good, good. Keep pushing. Oh, so good. Okay, honey. Okay. This is where the end here is when everybody, it was like all hands on deck. Everybody was helping me, pushing me through it, telling me I could do it. They were so proud of me, and it was just like a really special, special experience. Good. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Good girl. She did a good job. All day, all night, in the morning. Strengthen me. Okay. You got it. Okay. You got this, sweetie. Perfect. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's a great job, baby. Good. 
good, Very good, good. Fair. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You're not hurting me. You do what you gotta do. <sighs> Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Katie, I can see you. Good, 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 good. Go, baby, go, 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 go. Come on, press, 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 press. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, honey. Your baby, he's down there. Yes, you're doing so good. Dig, 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 honey. You can, you can. Everybody's full of hair. You can, you can, you can. 
Okay, 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 Okay. 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 Why don't you see if you can just push it? What? Give it. Give it. Give it a good little push. Okay. In between and see what happens. You can do. Okay. You can do it. Press and push down. Oh, she's hurting. Oh, there it is. It's the baby's head. Yeah, honey, it's the baby's head. It's a baby. Look at me. We got this. We got it. The baby. The baby's on. Yes. Hi, baby. Oh, here goes the baby. Oh my God. I love you so much, honey. You're so good. Shoulder. Okay, here it comes. Okay. Oh my gosh, Katie, Katie, Katie. He's, 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 The one thing I will say about giving birth is that after he actually arrived, it was like I snapped out of it completely. No pain anymore, nothing, just pure bliss. Everything else was gone. I couldn't even see anything but him. Mazalto. And that's it for Donovan's birth story. I'm so thankful that you guys are watching this and hopefully if you're an expectant mama, this will give you some encouragement um, to, to be brave and to not fear what's coming because it's incredible that you're totally capable of doing it and 
it's it's going to be a life-changing day for you so again thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content from me go ahead and subscribe and tell me in the comments below what you'd like to see next bye <laughs>